Guys, what's up? Living in a different world today, I guess. Uh, most of us are quarantined at home and I've uh, been thinking about making a video for a while. I just haven't actually gone and done it. So uh, I'm going to do a video today that's, uh, I guess for the crazy times, we'll do crazy measures. But uh, so um, the one thing I've been meaning to talk to you guys about that I wanted to post up, you know, while we're stuck, I guess, uh, quarantined at home. Uh, when you're not out on the lake is uh, what's the difference uh, between how to find those giant bass like a, a normal size two pound bass one pound bass three pound bass to those six seven eight nine pound bass because um, there is a difference you're not going to catch them in every place of the lake that you you would catch the smaller ones and I'm I'm going to try and base it off of the big biggest ones that I've caught on my home lake which is a reservoir so it's going to apply more, more to reservoirs um, than it is any place else so keep that in mind throughout the video but uh i've caught in four that were over seven pounds um uh, which for the northeast is a big fish and all four of those had something in common um so i'm going to try and point out the the most common areas that i find that those bigger fish get um and now i'm at the point where i don't i don't normally target the areas where the smaller fish live or I just do those high target, um, bigger fish areas because uh, once you catch, uh, you know, a couple seven plus pounders, you're never satisfied. You just want them to keep getting bigger. So I'm going to try and lay out um, how the area surrounding the each fish that I caught was and what time of the year and the bait that I was using. Um, and you'll see that, that they all have something in common uh, or more than one thing in common. Um, I don't necessarily think the bait really matters all that much. I think it's just w the places where these big ones feel comfortable and they set up to feed. Um, and if you're wondering, like, you know, well, how do you know um, what these areas look like? I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours on this particular lake. So in my mind, anywhere that I'm at on this lake, I have a visual of what it looks like underwater. Um, just from, you know, graphing it and driving over it a million times and, and you know, uh, fishing it a million times, I know exactly what it looks like, um, thanks to my graph. Uh, so what I normally do, first of all, is when I'm, I'm looking for these areas, uh, if you have a, a map in your, um, your Lawrence unit or your Humminbird unit, Garmin unit, whatever unit you decide to use, um, what I normally do to help me find these areas is on Lawrence, I'm not sure if it's the same with everything else, but with the Lawrence uh, units, I I uh, will go into my settings on my maps and I'll shade in the areas that are shallower than 20 foot. So 20 foot and shallower, I'll have them highlighted. So anywhere where there's 20 foot plus, I want that to be highlighted white. So everything else is blue. So I'll, I'll show you why this matters in a minute because they, they all have the same exact thing in common um, and it'll make it a lot easier for you to locate these spots or at least when you catch one that's that size, you can look down at your map and realize, oh, this is the kind of spot that he was talking about. Um, now, I, I don't know if this is going to apply anywhere else in the country, but the Northeast, I know that this, it's specific for this area. I would imagine that it's the same all over the world because bass are bass for the most part. Um, but so let's get started. I just want to go over the four biggest ones that I've caught. I'll go over a bonus fifth that I lost the other day. That was the biggest fish I've ever seen um, uh, on this lake. So um, number one was a number one and number two were both caught in the springtime, early spring, um, April. Uh, the water temperature was in the mid 40s to the low 50s. Uh, so 45 to 50, that's when you tend to see a lot of these uh, bigger than average fish. Um, and it same applies in the fall as well. But uh, so so I'm going to try and, and draw out what it looks like on my what what the area looks like. That way you guys can see what I mean when I'm always resorting to saying close by deep water. Because I've gotten a lot of questions that are like, well, what's close to deep water? Does that mean, you know, the it's 50 yards away? Is that 100 yards away? No, no, no. I'm, when I say next to deep water, I'm talking 10 yards, you know, 20 yards in, in the worst case scenario. Um, so let's get started on that first one. The first one I caught was a 722. I actually caught that one in a tournament. Um, and 
it was on a, a you know some brush it was on a, a log per se um there was some rock nearby the water temperature is probably 48 degrees i caught this one on a senko um black and blue senko with a quarter ounce weight without the weight being pegged um when i'm fishing in this early spring when i'm not anytime i'm not fishing in grass i tend to not peg the weight because i want that weight to fall first and then that bait to slowly trail its way down like almost like it's chasing the the sinker um so the area that i was fishing i'm going to show you an example of what it looked like okay so here's the bank and there was these little springs right so there's this is steep here this is about a, a 45 degree bank okay and the channel comes up like this comes close to it and back out right so where this fish was set up at was each one of these just say this is a spring now what a spring is is if you have a big mountain that's up here right big mountain and then you got a 45 degree angle bank right and then here's where the water is these springs are like little ditches that run down the side of the mountain and they leak little fresh water into the into the, the main lake right here but what I had found previously was that after it rained and you had those springs that were coming down, the bait fish would gravitate towards those little springs. Um, I guess fresh water, maybe it was a little bit warmer because it had been warm out, you know, warmer out previously. So those were bringing a lot of that bait fish to that fresh water. Now, all this area was straight rock. All right. There's nothing but rock on here. And then there was one lay down that was coming out this far and this channel was about 10 to 15 yards behind me okay so this area where that fish was set up at was probably a foot or two foot deep but he had that deep water access she had that deep water access right here 10 to 15 yards there was 20 foot plus i can see all this on my map right so i pitched my senko right to the left side or the right side of the log i'm sorry he ate it i jacked him got him in a boat 722 so that's what this setup looked like it was a 45 degree bank you had pretty tight contours here and then it dropped straight off into the channel okay now that's one example of what these fish will do um the biggest fish in a lake are going to use you have that deep water access you never notice when a when a uh a fish picks up your bait he always before you set the hook he always wants to run this way or out towards deeper water i don't know why that is i think they maybe use these shallower areas to feed and then once they feed or once they have what they're they're going after then they just you know come out here and and suspend until they're ready to eat again and then they do it again that's what i think um let me wipe this off that's the first example that was a 722 now was our first example if you guys have any questions to this stuff too feel free to ask me you can you can ask me anything you want and i'll i'll get back to you especially now since we're really not doing anything um all right so that was our first example the second one was a 735 and i caught that one about a week after the 722 also in the spring i caught this one on a spinnerbait now this area was a little bit different but it's it's really similar and it still has that deep water really close by and he was on wood so that's the second one that's on wood second one that's right next to deep water okay all right so you have a point right now it doesn't have to be a point you can visually see this can be an underwater point as well okay you have a point and then it goes back into like a spawning cove right so this particular area had a flat right here now flat is like in any area even if it's 10 foot deep, if it's 10 foot, 10 foot, 10 foot for any period of time, that's what a flat is. Okay. So this is the flat. The channel runs out here and comes close to where this point is. It doesn't exactly run to the point, but it's close by. Now, right here, you got at least 20 foot, right? Out here, you're going to have more like 50 foot. But this 20 foot, I think, is key. Any kind of deeper water nearby. Now, this little flat this was in the early spring so i think this fish was coming from the channel moving up to the flat to feed and he staged on that flat and then was going to work his way back here to spawn okay because i did have a friend that uh caught this oh, i believe it was the same fish but he caught it a week later and it was in the back spawning all right so that's why i kind of figured that this is the trail that that fish took 
Now, what makes this flat, this flat can be fine by itself, but what makes it better is there's little gravel, there's a little bit of gravel that's on this bank, right? It's like little pea gravel. And then what made it even better if you, is you have stumps, right? So you have some stumps on there. This fish was set up on a stump in about two foot of water. Now what I normally do is I'll angle the boat straight with the stump so I can hit all of them in the same cast. I'll cast across it and then bump off that one, bump off that one, bump off that one. Well, when I bumped off this one, that's when that one ate it. And that was a 735. So as you can see right here out in this area is probably about 10 to 15 foot deep too. Once you get back in here, it's all five foot. That's another flat. So here's the first flat that they'd come to off that point, right? If there's a flat near a point, it's, it's perfect, but they, they're always near that deep water. Like this one had, you know, was maybe 10 yards, 15 yards away from 20 foot of water. So you can see he had that deep water access, which I think is crucial for these big fish. All right. So that's number two. Now, Number three and number four were both in the fall. Okay, so that's the two times a year that I think you have the biggest chance, that I know you have the biggest chance of catching a fish, a fish of a lifetime. Now in the fall, I don't necessarily think from the ones that I've caught that were over seven pounds, and I've caught hundreds of fish that were six pounds plus, and they all seem to use the exact same kind of stuff that these fish do. So your bigger size fish are gonna, they usually think the same, it feels like. Um, so number three and number four were both in the fall. Both of them were on a frog. And both of them had the exact same scenario set up on the lake, um, which you'll see is common um, and, and comparable to the ones that I caught in April, which was in the spring, okay? so. This one in the fall had the same type of thing. It had a stream coming in the back. Okay, so here's your bank, right? It had a stream coming in through here. So it's, it had fresh water coming in. Okay, that was important. It had grass all through here. Both sides of it, grass. Now this stream created a, a ditch in between the patches of grass so this it was basically a deeper ditch right here which was only like two or three foot the fish were set up on this five foot flat this is both five foot flat now where this flat comes off here there is a channel that runs around and out here okay that's exactly how the channel goes now both of these fish were in the exact same area um three years separated apart both of them were over seven pounds it was not the same fish i've taken the picture of the same fish the picture of the fish that i have twice and it's, it's not the same fish it had distinct differences in both of them so that was two different seven plus pounders that got in the same area the same time of year to eat the same bait what are the chances of that there's something about these kinds of areas that these fish like, right? So this fish was way back here. There's a couple logs laying there. There was a couple stumps in there. But what I think is important is you had this little ditch right here that was only two foot, but this ditch almost runs straight out to the channel. So what that fish do when he ate, he hit that frog and went straight for that ditch, right? I think you have this channel so so off of the channel you have this ditch it could be a creek channel too this is why creek channels and channels are so important that's what they use to travel so this fish can go right out to i mean right out here like i said it's 20 foot 20 foot so this fish had a little bit further to travel to get to that deep water but the point that i'm making is it was still within 10 yards 15 yards of where that fish was like they're not going far from where that where that uh, deep water access is both of those fish on the frog were up in a foot to two foot of water real shallow on wood and used that channel to get back out once i hooked them all right so with now that's all four that's all four of those big ones that have in common so now you got to see 
where the types of areas that I'm targeting or what they look like for where you're going to have the best shot to catch the biggest fish in your lake. Um, so now, why is this important? Because there are hundreds of thousands of other areas that you can fish that don't have anything like this nearby. Um, you know, if you have a giant hundred yard long flat and it's, it looks good. You got grass, right? You got wood, you got cribs, you got stumps, you got everything, right? But it's a gradual, say this flat is 10 foot all the way along, right? But you only have, you know, 12 foot here and it's still gradual. And then you have 15 foot here. It's still gradual. That's not the types of areas that you want to focus on for those really big fish. You want to focus on those areas that have smaller flats, not something huge, smaller flats or that are near deep water. So for instance, if you have a hundred yard flat, that's all 10 foot. And then you have a hundred yard channel right here, 10 yards from the corner of this flat, right? Then those fish will most likely set up on this corner of that flat because they have the quickest access to that deep water for them to move up and down. You see what I'm saying? All right, so now here's the last one. This is the one, now I don't usually tell fish stories. I did post this on my Instagram because I was like heartbroken. Um, I hooked one last week that was the biggest fish I've ever seen in the lake. Um, I've caught many a sevens, well sixes, several sevens and this fish made those look little trust me it was a giant like eight nine ten pounds giant completely ridiculous i could have fit a cat in its mouth that's how big it was but anyway i didn't catch it so what the area that he was set up in was very similar to the first two areas that i posted uh that i just put up here with the 722 and the 735 there was a flat Here's the bank. There was a flat. And this flat was only about 10 foot long. Okay, but this flat was only five feet deep. So a very small flat. You had the channel running right here up against the bank and then out. Okay. There was like a little rock pile right here. And then like some brush that was just laying on the bottom right there. And I casted my bait up there, and I brought it right here. And as soon as I felt that branch, she smoked it. Well, my boat, this was, this was my fault completely. I should have caught that fish. My boat was sitting right here, right? And when I pitched it here, when by the time I set the hook, I let that fish swim just for a second until he was about here. I set the hook. I saw his big-ass mouth come up like a foot from me. So I got nervous and the first thing I do is lift it up on my rod and when I lift it up on the rod it put more pressure on that fish and snapped my line. So I was literally about to grab him with my hand when the line snapped. Um, so yeah, it was a heartbreaker. But again, this fish was on a short little small 10 foot long flat with a 20 foot deep channel right next to it. And it doesn't have to be a channel. As long as you have that deep water access nearby, which I consider, I don't know, 15 foot or deeper is, is deep water access. Um, now, now, like I said, this, isn't, this doesn't apply. It, it still applies to smaller fish, but this is for the biggest fish that are in your lake. This, this is what they're going to set up on um, or things to look for where you have a, a better chance of catching them. This is not... Um, to say that, that you're not gonna catch like little fish on these flats or anywhere else, that it's beside the point. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the biggest fish that are in your lake. Um, so you can see it's fish number five, rock pile, which I could see visually, it was about a foot of foot of water up against the bank, and then you you know, I was only sitting ten feet out from the bank. There was just a little flat I could see on the map that had surrounded by deep water, and that's exactly where it was. So um, I, I've been wanting to do this for a while, but, uh, just things have been putting it off. I'm going to try and keep making some more now that we're, uh, getting closer to the fishing season. I hope you guys have been out. Um, 
and caught a lot of fish so far this year it, it hasn't been great yet i've been getting uh catching a few fish a day um some days i went out i didn't catch any um so the water's still cold um but we're getting closer to that season hopefully everybody's safe and staying safe i hope this will help you guys catch some giant bass um and if you got any questions about it just let me know i'll try to um answer them to the to the best that i can uh and as fast as i can uh, i hope to see you guys soon and uh stay safe later